Hi guys, it's Clyde again, here from Leechburg Lights, and I got a quick video I want to do. Um, and I've already posted this video on building this controller, but one of the things that everybody asks is, how do you connect the, um, the network wire to the board using a, uh, a network uh, cable? What I've got here is I've got a piece of network wire. I've stripped a little, uh, most of the... Um, most of the sheeting away and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna um, take these uh, paired wires and I'll, I'll get nice and close to the camera so you can see this because uh, people get confused why I do this and um, I'm, I'm just using the brown and the orange I've snipped away all the other wires there's no other wires just the brown and the orange now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the brown wires the, or the striped wires and I am going to twist those together on this end. Now, it doesn't matter what happens to the other end, that's not important, but what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a light connection between the, uh, the two wires. And if you're familiar with Lightarama, you know that Lightarama controllers, they can be daisy chained one off of another. And, um, all I'm doing here is I'm creating the same similar connection uh, using network wire. Now, the solid is considered the uh, data neutral, and the striped is considered the positive data. And whenever you look at the board, on the right-hand side here, the, the striped will go onto the pad on the right here, and the solid will go into the center. There's a couple things we're going to do first. We're going to put a little bit more solder on the pad, and we're also going to tin these, uh, and then we'll install them. So I'm going to set up for that. Okay, I've zoomed in so that you can see me add just a little bit of solder to this um, to these solder pads, just so it makes it a little easier for us. But what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my solder, and I'm going to tin the end of my... Um, I'm going to tin the end of my soldering iron, and then I'm going to get down in here, and I'm just going to add a touch. See how it bubbled up right there? I'm going to do the same thing to this center solder pad. And notice how it's nice and shiny now. It should be shiny. That's what you want. Next, we need to tin the ends of our network cables. Uh, once again, tin the end of your wire, or tin the end of your uh, soldering iron, and then hold it against the back side of it, and then push the solder on from the front end. Never touch it to the line. Once you've done that, there's plenty of solder on there. We're ready to put this up onto the board. Okay, we're just about ready here. We've got our network cable, and we're tinned, and we're ready to begin. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these, I'm going to bend these wires just a little bit so that they're kind of in the up position so that I can manipulate them with my hand while I am soldering. And I hope, let's see, it would be nice to get a clear picture. Now we're ready to begin. Whoop. Now we're ready to begin. Maybe I'll turn it this way and my hand won't be in the way. So we're going to set it right on the solder pad. and that's all there is to it. That's the data positive and next we're going to do the data neutral. And that's all there is to it. I mean it's pretty simple. Now the thing that most people uh, that most people are worried about is that it's it's such a small space that you can't do it and the hard part is making sure you don't have a bridge solder gap between the two. See if I can clear that up a little bit. And uh, there's no bridge there. There's a definite line separating. All right, so right now I want to pull this in a little closer so you can see this. And we have uh, right here we can see uh, some numbers. And, and it says 3612. And these are the numbers for the pins on your RJ45 uh, plug. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have these wires connected to the right, uh, the correct uh, inputs. And the data plus, which is our stripe, is going to go to the number one, and the, the data negative or neutral is going to go to the number two here. And next, I'm going to just uh, use a little bit of help here. Because all we do is we just take a hold of this with, I use pliers and then I use my thumb, and we punch it straight down in. It's called a punch jump down jack. And we're just going to slide it right in. There's copper leads that actually cut right inside there, cut the uh, coating of the wire off, because this is very, very thin coating. And then we're going to turn around and do the same thing over here. We have number one and number two. We're going to put our stripes down first on this one. And then we're going to take our orange solid and put it in the number two spot. So let's see if I can seat this a little better. There we go. And um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll do a little quick test and run a wire from the 682 and see if we're getting DMX signal. Okay, and we're back. I have taken a second and plugged this in. It's uh, got power now. You can tell by the solid red light. And I have uh, connected the um, RJ45 cable to the E682. And now we're going to test to make sure that we have data connection coming into the controller now. When we have a positive connection because we see a flashing red light, that tells us that's our significance that we actually have data coming in. So. If I were to plug in anything to this controller, let's say one of my uh, little stars here, um, this this little star should light right up because it's on test number ten. Uh, the the uh, dip switch is set to test number ten, which is the test program. If I unplug this, lo and behold, the star starts to work. Now, let's test the other connection. Make sure that both of them work. And there we go. We see our star has stopped working. As soon as the network receives data, the controller shuts down the. It doesn't. It overrides the dip switch setting for um, uh, for the test sequence, and uh, it begins to accept data. So I call this a successful test. I hope this is very helpful for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if this is if if there's something I missed or if, if there's something else you want to see. Um, also, don't forget to like my, uh, like my page and subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel because this year is going to be a lot more videos coming as I start setting up for the holidays. Guys, take care. Thanks. Bye.